Is it near where your head is when you are sleeping? Right. <clears throat> now, where is the door leading into your room? Is it on the far side, on the wall opposite? It's on the left side of my room. Do you know the wattage of the bulb of that light? No. And could you describe to me the lighting condition of your room when that light is on and no other light is on? It is very, very dim. From, strike that. You were led down to the dim area from the bedroom, correct? Correct. And you were not stopped anywhere else, is that right? When I was walking out of the room, he didn't see me and he told me to stop and he grabbed my shirt and he stopped me and we began walking again. <laughs> now, I want to ask you about some other things, Rhonda, about this incident now. Let's first go to the time period when you were in the laundry room and you are tied up. The restroom, restroom, excuse me. And the person comes in and removes the bandana and talks to you about how sorry he is, okay? Yeah. Is the person who removed the bandana, it was the ski mask, ski mask, sorry. Is that person in court today? Yes. Could you point him out, please, and describe what he is wearing? He is wearing a yellow shirt, long blonde hair, and mustache. And could you raise your finger, please, and point to him directly? Yes. All right. Now, now there are three people in the courtroom now dressed in yellow. You say shirts. For the record, they are jumpsuits, but it doesn't matter. And which one, if we start from left to right, are you pointing to the one on the left, the middle one, or the one on the right? the one on the left. That is the direction the court felt she was pointing. Now, the record can reflect the witnesses obviously identifying Mr. Richardson represented by Mr. Margines. All right, thank you. Now Rhonda, taking you back to the same restroom that you are talking about and I would like to at this time invite your attention to the time span when the person was holding the gun to your head and had touched your breasts in the manner that you have described for us is that person in court today? Yes, he is. Could you point him out, please? He is the middle one. May the record reflect, Your Honor. She has identified Defendant Hudson. Yes, the record can reflect the witness. Is obviously referring to the defendant, Mr. David Hudson. Again, I assume that was deemed objected to. Yes, certainly the objection is noted for the record. You have a continuous objection. Continue, Mr. Hewlson back. Now, Rhonda. You mentioned that during your testimony there were really three people involved in this incident and I want you to, just by way of thinking about this, just because there may be a total of three people here in court doesn't mean I'm going to be asking you to pick out the third person <clears throat> necessarily. So what I want you to do is think about this very carefully before you answer this. Is the third person who was involved in the robbery, the person that you have at this point, is the third person involved in this robbery. Is he in court today? And before you answer that, you can answer yes, no, I am not sure, I don't know, I just can't say. You are not required to answer in any given way. Do you understand? Yeah, all right, just be honest. I don't know. Okay, thank you, I have no further questions. All right, one second. With that, with respect to cross-examination, Mr. Margines or Mr. Bovee, May I start, Your Honor? Yes, thank you. The location of the house where your mom was, what room was that in? It was in the den, it was downstairs, all right. And there is one level of your house that contains the den, is that right? Right. And then you go up some stairs and you are in the middle level? Right. And is that where the living room is? Right. And then the bedrooms are on the upper level? Right. And there are a total of, you say, roughly 25 stairs from top to bottom? Right. Now, was there any light on in your room when you were sleeping? No, wait, yes, there was. It was the light above. It was a small light and it was in the middle of the bed. It was kind of like a night light. You say above, you mean hanging on the ceiling? No, it was, there is lights, it's a water bed and there is a back post and there is lights on the back post and then there is a small light above. Excuse me. Since we are going to recess at four, I intend to go through without a recess. We will work right now, then, unless somebody wants a recess for some reason. Thank you. But this light is at the head of the bed. No, it's where I am sleeping. It's behind me above. It is behind you and that is on a wall then. No, it is on the back. 
And there is, I don't know what you call it, it is a back post. It's kind of, is it near where your head is when you are sleeping? Right. Now, where is the door leading into your room? Is it on the far side, on the wall opposite? It's on the left side of my room. And do you know the wattage of the bulb of that light? No. And could you describe to me the lighting condition of your room when that light is on and no other light is on? It is very, very dim. Um, strike that. You were led down to the den area from the bedroom, correct? Correct. And you were not stopped anywhere else, is that right? When I was walking out of the room, he didn't see me and he told me to stop and he grabbed my shirt and he stopped me and we began walking again. Clothing. 
All three of them? Yes, I remember shoes. I saw shoes, tennis shoes. I don't know which one was wearing them. You can't associate those shoes with any of the particular suspects? No. When you say that the clothing was dark, you mean both above the waist and below the waist? Right. Could you tell us what color dark clothing these were, like brown, black, or anything? No. Is that because it was so dark in the house that you couldn't tell the colors? Right. <clears throat> you say he didn't see you. Was it very dark in the hallway? Well, he was walking as the other man was getting my brother, and then he told me to stop. Wait a minute. Were, were there any lights on in the hallway? Yes. It wasn't a hallway. You walk, you walk out, and it's kind of like a big square platform, and then it goes down. Like a landing? What? Well, is it like a landing at the top of the stairs? Is that what that is? Yeah, it is just like a square. And then it has doors leading into various rooms. Right, all right. And where was there a light in that area? It was the whole house is kind of open and then the light was on in the living room. So it kind of just lighted up the stairs. And this was a light and lamp in the living room. Right, and that light stays on the whole night. Right, do you know the wattage of that light? No. How would you describe the lighting condition of the landing area? I'd say dim, bright type. A little bit brighter than dim. I mean, I can see the suspect's face. Okay. Now, as you were being led down the stairs, you were the first one in the row of four people to be tied up? No. You had told us earlier that the man who was leading you was behind you, and then your brother, and then another man. Is that right? Right, right. So it was like four people marching in a row with you at the front? Right. And did you look back at any time as you were being led down the stairs? No. Now, was there a light on at all in the den? No. So the only source of illumination in the den was from that one lamp in the living room? Right. Is there an area or another room which separates the bedroom? I'm sorry. The living room from the den? No. When you walk up those stairs from the den, are you immediately in the living room? Yes. And how far away from the stairs was that lamp? I'd say 25 feet. And did that lamp have a shade over it? Uh-huh. Is that a yes? Yes. Now you told us that at some point the person you identified in court, who the judge referred to as Mr. Richardson, who is seated right next to me? Correct. He came in and apologized and so on. And it was during that time that he took off his ski mask? Right. Did you ask him to take off his ski mask? No. And do you know what prompted him to do that? I am sorry, no. What did he do with the ski mask once he took it off? He just held it in his hands. And then, did he put it in uh, back on before he left the room? No. And did he tell you that he wanted you to see his face so you would know, so that would put you at ease? No. To your knowledge, was Jed ever put in a closet? He was put in the laundry room. Do you call that a closet? Yeah. And that is how your family refers to it sometimes, is a closet. No, it is a laundry room. There is a sink and a dryer and a washer and closet. I mean, a drawer type thing that opens, a pantry, and then there is a door that shuts. You just told us that you would call it a closet. Is that how your family members refer to it? No, we refer to it as a laundry room. You had told us about the two people who had awakened you, one carrying the gun and one carrying the flashlight. The one who carried the gun, is that the same person who molested you in the bathroom? Yes. And the one who came in and apologized, was he the person with the flashlight? Yes. How many of the three people wore face masks? One. And that was the one who apologized? Right. And did the others wear something else? They wore black bandanas and a black beanie cap. One, I don't know who was wearing a hood or a beanie cap. I'm not sure. four boys for 15 minutes. Have you reviewed that document? Yes. Now, having reviewed that document, do you have any recollection as to the information that the document contains? Yes, this is after she had the $30,000. Do you see a notation at the bottom that says that Laura Coffey is accepting $21,000 as full payment on the note to Arlen and Richard Grotus? And it lists the property on North Beaumont? Yes. And what is the amount indicated that she will accept as full payment on the note? 
that was the $21,000 after we gave her the $30,000. Now that document is dated the 15th of December 1984. Yes. I'd like to direct your attention to the sixth page of that document dated 12-28-84. Review that and let me know when you finish reviewing that. Having now reviewed that document, can you tell me if you have any recollection as to the information contained in that document? Yes. Tell me what information is contained in that document. Well, as best as I can remember, we had gave her the $30,000 and I was paying her $1,000 a month up until this time. And then she wrote this letter saying that she wanted the rest of the money right now or the deal is off, which is kind of contradictory, but that's what she wrote. Okay, who is this document from? Laura Coffey. This is to certify that I, Laura Coffey, canceled all offers, I can't read the last name, cancel all escrows. It doesn't say that escrow starting at $65,000 escrow satisfied at $65,000 with, can you help me there, counsel, or more, to continue with a note to pay off in full in five years. Signed, Laura Coffey. I guess that would be, is that somewhat inconsistent with what you told us about what your buyout was? Yes. And this letter is dated almost five months after you say you paid her $30,000. Is that correct? Yes. Do you have any explanation for that, sir? Yes. Could you tell us what it is? Laura Coffey was very unpredictable, and she wrote that, I guess she just wrote it because she wanted to write it. She didn't say anything to me pertaining this when she wrote this. She just wrote that, and that's what I received. Now, again, I think we covered the fact that to this moment, you cannot produce us any evidence that you paid her $30,000. Is that right? I do not have my paperwork that I had before. I'd like to move Exhibit 26 into evidence and there is a stipulation that goes with this exhibit and perhaps we could have the court read that at some point in time. Very well, any objection? No objection. 26 for identification will be admitted into evidence with that number subject to the stipulation which the court will read to the jury later. Now, the original loan was for $90,000, is that correct? Yes. During the course from August 82 through February of 84, I think we had computed that there was a little bit more than $13,000 that had been paid on the note by your brother Richard. Objection. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. There's evidence that he made checks payable to Bank of America through his checking account in the amount of some $13,000, is that correct? I assume that's right. And we had an additional $5,000, I guess that was paid by yourself, or maybe $7,000 that was paid by yourself through money orders, and that started sometime in May, right around there, yes. So that left roughly a balance at that time of what? About $70,000? I believe that misstates the evidence. He's asking, overruled. You may answer if you know the answer. Would you repeat that? Did that leave a balance of some $70,000? When I was paying her the $1,000 a month, we had agreed that the $50,000 would be the total amount of the mortgage and that I'd given her $30,000 already. And the $1,000 a month that I was paying her after this was to be the money remaining, which she we talked about the extra $5,000 plus interest until this was paid. So that would have meant that the rest of the mortgage would have been about $27,000. If Laura Coffey came into court tomorrow and testified that you never gave her that $30,000 that you have testified to, would she be telling a lie? Yes, she would. By the way, have you ever used another name? Like what? Daryl Beal? Yes. And so that's what you told Rachel your name was when you first met her, didn't you? No. And so you just use this name when you choose to, for some particular reason, why you use that name? Yes. You were engaged in business also, is that right? When? On from 83 through 86, 87. My own business, yes. What was that business, AG Consulting? Engaged in any other business? Not other than cars. What about F&G Welding? That was when I did welding work. I put that in there. So you use that name also as a business? Not really. 
I didn't use that to where I actually did me any work with that. That was when I was going to start doing welding. But that was some name you had chosen to use at some point. I had bought a stamp to use it, yes. So you used it in some fashion or another, is that right? I think maybe once or twice. I think your testimony is, Mr. Grotus, that most of the monies, if not all of the monies that were expended on that building from April through December were monies that came from your employment, employment and inheritance, and I used money that I sold parts, you know, car parts and things like that, whatever I had available. Do you have any recollection as to what your income was in 1984? Roughly about $600 a month if I worked a regular week. And you worked throughout the year of 1984. There were no gaps, not that I recall. Do you have any independent recollection as to what your total income was for the year? Not right offhand. Did you file a tax return? I think so. For the year 84? Yes. And you've provided opposing counsel with copies of your tax returns prior to trial. Is that correct? As far as I know, yes. Perhaps we should mark these before we proceed. Next in order would be which, Your Honor? It would be 29. 29 will be a 1984 tax return of Arlen Grotus. That's 29 for identification. And 30 for identification would be a 1985 tax return, so marked. <clears throat> and 31 will be for identification, a 1986 tax return. That the will be marked 31. Mr. Grotus, I'd like for you to look at what has been marked for identification exhibit 29 and tell us if that is a tax return which you have supplied to the opposing counsel in this matter. Yes, it looks to be. And is that your tax return? Looks to be. Could you tell us what your adjusted gross income was in 1984 as listed on that return? Your adjusted gross. Here, looks to be $19,000. I'd like to show you what has been previously marked for identification as Exhibit 30. Tell us if that is a tax return for 1985 of Arlen Grotus. Yes, it looks to be. And you supplied us with those tax returns also, did you not? Yes. And could you tell us what your adjusted gross income is for 1985? A little over $20,000. In fact, $20,192. Is that what's listed there? Yes, I'd like to show you what has been previously marked for identification as Exhibit 31. I'd like for you to look over that document. Looks to be, is that a tax return for 1986? Yes. Of Arlen Grotus? Yes. Could you tell us what your adjusted gross income for 1986 as listed on that return? About $7,000. Is that correct? Yes. Now, during this period of 1984, Mid part of 1984, did you buy any cars? Probably. Do you have any recollection as to any particular vehicles that you purchased? 84? No, not right offhand. But what about 85 during the whole year? I probably bought some then. Any recollection as to vehicles you purchased in 85? Not right offhand. What about 86? Same thing. So you don't remember what you bought? I bought a few cars. I don't remember which ones they were. Did Rachel pay for any of those cars? She paid for some of them together with me. Was she buying cars with you before she got down here in December of 84? No, not that I recall. So it's your testimony that Rachel made no contribution to the business or the property or to you at all before she got here in 1984 of December? Not that I recall. Could you be mistaken about that? I don't know, could be. Now, it sounds to me, sir, that you had a considerable amount of property there, as well as investment in that property. Sounds like it would be something that you would want to protect through means of insurance. Is that correct? Yes. Did you maintain insurance on that property? Yes. After Rachel left in 1986? No. So Rachel leaves in December of 86, and you didn't have any insurance after that? No. Have you maintained any insurance on that property today? No. And so after December, <clears throat> as far as you can recall, when Rachel left, there was no insurance that was maintained on that property. I had insurance up to the time it was canceled. 
Have you always kept the taxes up? Yes. Anytime you allow the taxes to go in default? Yes. When? I think, I'm not sure, but I think it was around the latter part of 86 when one payment was missed of $1,000 that came back as delinquent, I should say. Is there any reason why you didn't keep insurance on that property after Rachel left? Yes. Could you tell us why? Because the insurance company canceled the policy because the second building we wanted to insure that for more than the original structure, the original house, that was there and it was going to be a commercial building. I'm not quite sure why you couldn't get insurance because they told me they didn't want the liability on people working on the building because it was a second structure. They insured mainly on the original house and property. What about work that was done on the property? Let's talk about the fence. I think I showed you a picture on Friday and you indicated that that fence was the fence that existed when you first purchased the property. How much work, if any, had been done on the fence prior to April? Your Honor, I'm going to object. I don't believe the question states the evidence as I recall. It, unless there's two different fences we're talking about and I'm confused. I'll try to clear up the question if it poses a problem very well. What kind of fence is on the property right now? A redwood fence. And when was that, the beginning of construction on that fence? Probably around 83, latter part of 83. So, parts of that fence had been completed prior to May of 84? Yes. How much of it? About half. And let me review for my own interest here. I think you testified that both yourself and Rachel, after December of 84, you put in roughly equal shares of material and construction costs on the building. Is that correct? When she first started putting in money, yes, and I think you estimated that at being $60,000. If I misstate that amount, please correct me. I'm not sure on that as far as amount. Do you have any estimate at all that you can give us, you mean Rachel, part or both together, both together, about around $60,000, I guess right around in there. So a total of $60,000, somewhere around in there. Now sometime in 1986, sometime in 86, specifically April 19, your brother Richard and you, Arlen Grotis, as a witness, signed a document. I'd like to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 18, and I believe admitted, this was admitted, Your Honor, yes, admitted into evidence. Do you recognize that document? Yes. Is that your signature? Yes, it is. And this document states that Richard Grotus has received $38,000 cash from Rachel S. Wayne for the complete release of all interest in property on Beaumont Avenue, Cherry Valley. It's signed by Richard Grotus, dated April 19, 1986, and it's witnessed by Arlen.